So the great thing about pegs is they let you move your artwork around without actually changing that artwork. When we select our drawing, press Control P, you'll see a green node has been created above it. And what we can do is using the transform tool and these handles, we can manipulate this square. We can skew it, we can scale it, we can rotate it. And if we deactivate this peg, you'll see our drawing goes back to its original position because we haven't actually changed anything. If we want to reset this, we just select it and press R to reset it. Really useful, especially when we're animating something. So from the timeline, you'll see we have a keyframe already made. Let's go all the way to frame 29 and press F6 again to create another keyframe. Now when we use our peg to move that square, let's scale it up, skew it, we can create some animation with just a single drawing. And that's the basis of cutout animation. Everything is happening from this center point. Now we can move this center point around. So if we have our advanced animation toolbar checked, we can select our transform tool up here and we can kind of move this to wherever we want. Let's, let's try it down here. Now, all our movement is gonna be coming from this point. That's called the pivot point. But let's say I don't really like that position and I want to move it temporarily. I can just drag it maybe up here and manipulate the points like that. What I recommend is moving the pivot point temporarily rather than always moving it permanently, especially for more complex animation. The last thing you may notice is this line on our timeline. Our peg is being motion tweened. And let's say we don't want that. We can press F6 and just press Control L on each side to get rid of that motion tween. And now our peg will hold its position until a new keyframe and then it pops into that new position. And then if we press Control K, we can re-add those tweens. So play around with both of these methods. You're gonna be using both when you animate. Now let's open up the peg properties. So we can press this yellow box and all this information here tells us where the peg is moving your artwork and how it's being manipulated. You can see the X, Y, and Z positions are stored here. The scale is over here and the rotation and skew are stored here. It even shows the permanent pivot point information and you can change this yourself. Take a note of these grayed out values. We're gonna be coming back to those later in the video. Now let's get into a few more complex examples. So the next important thing about pegs is you can connect certain pieces together. In this case, we have two drawings. We have our circles and we have our squares. Right now, each one has its own peg, so I can only move them independently of each other. If I create another peg and use these ports to plug in to each one, now I have an option to control them both at the same time. This is called a peg hierarchy, and it's the foundation of any kind of rigging. Here's a more complex example of this character's arm. You'll see we have the hand that's connected to the wrist, that's connected to the lower arm, and that's connected to the upper arm. Each separate piece has its own pivot point, so I can manipulate it differently when I animate. Speaking of which, a fast shortcut to step up to the next peg in the hierarchy is B. If we press B, you'll see we step up to our next peg. And if we press Shift B, we step back down the line. That's just a fast way of selecting multiple pieces in your rig. Before we move on, I wanna show you guys how the pegs look in the timeline. You'll notice we have our master peg here and it's connected to our upper and lower body. Using this arrow, we can open or close those pegs. So the peg on top, you can basically collapse everything in and it kind of groups together on your timeline. Now let's take a look at the difference. When things are open and I keyframe on the master layer, you'll notice that only the keyframes on that layer are being affected. Nothing else is being touched. However, when I close my peg and I keyframe, you'll see that everything below it also had a keyframe added. So usually when we animate, we want to keep our pegs closed. That way it keeps you in control of how the pieces move. 
right? Everything gets keyframed, so nothing is moving out of place, especially for more complex rigs. So sometimes you need to open the pegs, but most of the time, keeping your pegs closed should do the trick. Another fun thing to experiment with in pegs is cloning them. So if you select a peg and press clone drawings and timing, you basically create an exact replica of the original. And the funny thing is when we plug it in underneath, let's say the mouth, now this mouth is gonna be moving at double the speed of everything else because there's two pegs affecting it. All right, so we get kind of a very cool effect. Now we can even plug that into the eyes. And now when we move the head, the eyes and the mouth move at twice the speed. So it gives us kind of a master controller effect that we can play around with. And watch what happens if we clone this peg a third time and we plug it into the eyes. Now the eyes are moving at three times the speed. It almost looks like there's constraints on the eyes, but there's not. Pretty cool effect. Now, our last complex example. This is kind of where things can get pretty crazy. So if we go back into our tool properties, and remember we said to keep in mind these values over here. So let's open up this peg for our blue guy, and let's open up this peg for our red square. If we want to link these together, so for example, if I want to move the blue square and have the red square move as well, we can take a look at the position, press this drop down menu, and copy something that's called a function link. And all the function link is, is it's kind of an equation that tells Toon Boom how this blue guy is moving on the x axis. And if we go here, we can paste the function link to our x-axis on our red square, and let's do the same thing on the y. So now when we move this blue peg, it actually controls that red peg as well. But you'll notice if we rotate it, it doesn't. And that's because we only copied the position function link. If we were to copy the rotation function and paste it there, now the rotation moves as well. So one example of this in practice is let's say we have two pieces of our sleeve. These functions are connected. So when I move this blue dot, it moves the sleeve together, kind of like an actual shirt. So in this case, this peg has the same function as this deformation point. And that's why it's able to move those points around. Right, here's the same concept, but a little bit more advanced. I'm trying to control the whole face with just this peg. Obviously, there's some more work to do, but you can see the possibilities of connecting functions. It's kind of like a master controller, but without all those extra poses. Guys, okay, so that's pretty much all I know about pegs and how I use them in my day-to-day -day job as an animator. I find it's really useful to know how pegs work, especially when you're using a complex rig. It's good to know why the parts of the rig are moving the way they do, and it helps you keep control of that rig. Understanding pegs was really the first step I went through in leveling up my cutout animation. So we're going to be doing this back to basics series, guys, quite a bit. We're going to go over just basic topics a little bit more in depth and a little bit more targeted to beginners. Hopefully, even if you're using Toon Boom for a while, you still learn something. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed.